Good morning everyone. We are leaving our jungle retreat. We saw monkeys this morning right before we were leaving. Yeah. That's always exciting. You guys know me and kind of snow. We're monkeys. monkey dorks. <laughs> <laughs> But we also had a beautiful hike. Anywho, we're headed to Puerto Maldonado. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's further down into the Amazon. We're kind of right now in a transition area between the Cloud Forest and the Amazon Basin. We're headed into the Amazon Basin. Short drive today. Looking forward to this next spot. It's going to be a super special place, guys. I'm sure you're going to love it. The first little town we, we're coming through is Quince Mil. And one of the things that I've learned is this area through here is a rich gold mining area. However, a lot of it is illegal mining. And so we're going to see probably along this journey some evidence of that. Also, this is the area where they grow coca and so which is what they make cocaine and other stuff from so <laughs> it can be a bit of a marginal area we have been advised on what to look for and how to navigate this area so we don't have any concerns don't worry guys we're going to be safe but i did kind of want you to know a little bit of the background of the area that we're traveling through i think we've told you before but this is kind of some of our favorite sort of scenery is all these green big lush trees sort of this this jungly environment it's so live with birds and animals and plants so I think I've mentioned that we are in kind of a rainforest environment but just to the right of us and down below us is a river and we kind of been crossing back and forth so sometimes the rivers on the right sometimes it's on the left I'm gonna miss this jungle, but it's a beautiful ride down to Puerto Maldano, and uh, we're probably about halfway there. All right, we're driving along the road and running right here along the road. See him? He gives way into the bushes. Maybe he'll go up one of the tree. Up. Oh. A little monkey right along here. So cool. <laughs> An old dilapidated abandoned bridge that's now a clothesline. We're coming out of the town in Mbate, a little teeny tiny community, and we're crossing this river. And it looks like to Puerto Maldonado, we have 179 kilometers left. ¿Qué es pescado? What kind? Paco. Paco? A pollo? Paco y pollo. Gracias. All right, we stopped off at this little roadside restaurant. I got the Lomo Saltado, and we've noticed out here they have a lot more yuca, and so this came with yuca and papas, a rose, and a small salad. So we're gonna share. Yep, lunch is on. So this is the area that I was telling you about the illegal mining and so if you notice throughout this area they've stripped all the trees a lot of them the palm trees they're still sticking up there's no bushes on top no palm fronds on top looks like they've either been poisoned or burned just a vast area where they've excavated the ground and yeah so we've been told that it's illegal mining and then years ago there was a big clash between the government and the illegal miners and the illegal miners or the cartel or whatever it was that running actually won and i think now um there's kind of payoffs or however it works in any event the illegal mining continues as well as the illegal deforestation and clearing of the land Nothing to fear, my friend, no, no. It's 
It's the natural road out of Ground is shaking, you thunder roar. roar. Wouldn't worry, it's just a storm. I just let my body pour to the natural Colorado. So unwind the dawn, unravel. We can't help. Ladders inside and crackles on the side of the natural arrival vibrating in us all natural arrival vibrating in us all We have made it to the town of Puerto Montanado, which is an Amazon town here in Peru. Oh, there's definitely some activity going on over there. Watch out in front of you, Kurti. Oh, wow. big, big mess. Everybody looked like it wasn't going to be too bad, so y'all cross your fingers for the motorcycle riders. But we turn soon and we head to our camp. We have made it to our likely camp and as you can see sometimes we drive through some pretty iffy looking roads, turn a corner and boom an eco lodge in the middle of a city. Kurt's gonna go in and work his magic. We'll see. Alright, found me one of these hairless Peruvian dogs. Look how ugly this thing is. <laughs> All right, you guys wonder how we get laundry done right here. It's five sola, it's, it's five soles per kilo. So we put it on here, see how much it weighs, and we'll pick it up later on today. All right, so we're here in Puerto Maldonado, and some of these little towns have sort of markets, and some of them, the really the markets are more on the road, and that's the case definitely through this little area. But you can also tell we're down more in the tropical environments. Lots of bananas, lots of citrus, naranja. Also, there's fish. And a lot of that fish comes from the rivers here. So look at that fish. Some of this fish is pretty interesting. I gotta get another look so I can show you. <laughs> We're also definitely obviously in a moto taxi area. And so there's moto taxi areas, there's moto taxis everywhere. But another thing that's unique about this area is the actual motorcycles are taxis. So if you see these guys in the vests right here, they're actually operating taxis on motorcycles. And so you just hop on the back of the motorcycle and get a ride. So that's something unique and something we hadn't seen. A lot of piñas, a lot of plantanos, limones. Let's see if we can squirt across this busy intersection here. And you can see the market goes all the way down the road there. Papayas. Ah. So this is Puerto Maldonado. And it is sort of a tourist destination to see the Amazon in Peru. So a lot of the tours come out here, drop you off, and you go up into the jungle for four or five days. Guys, I'm feeling a bit irresponsible. I was out riding my bike out on a jungle road today, and apparently my phone fell out of my pocket. We were able to track it, but it wasn't where I was, so I was on kind of a gravel road. There's a lot of motorcycle taxis around here, so someone probably picked it up shortly after it fell out of my pocket. In any event, we lost signal, we've erased it. It's my second cell phone in a year I've lost, so I need to tighten up, but in any event, I'm down here getting another one. It's not cheap. Alright, there's a bunch of squirrels here and they are driving this boy crazy. He 
wants to get him a squirrel. He wouldn't know what to do with it if he got one. So Van is my little chill kitty. She likes to find a nice place in the sh shade, sometimes in the sun. Put her little white paws out and just chill. And right here, in this hostel overlooking this little lagoon, there's all these birds <laughs> chirping, flying around. So she's having fun. We got a really, really cool thing we're gonna do today. But, I wanted to show you where we're staying. We've been staying here for a few days and we got a few more days here. But the place has worked out pretty good. Now I gotta tell you one thing about this Amazon here in Peru. It is really hot and humid. No worries, they have a pool here. And so that's kind of nice. And on Sunday, they get quite a crowd here. They probably had about 30 people at any given time hanging out in the pool. They have a lovely restaurant over here. And the family here is amazing. They kind of all work here. And the mom and the daughters, the cooks, the dad's kind of the manager. And they run a really nice place. But out here, they have a little feeding station. And I dropped some bananas on there. And we were able to attract some monkeys and mot mots. And that was really cool. But additionally, they have a bathroom and a shower. And for overlanders, it's kind of a private bathroom and shower separate from what everybody else uses for the pool. And so it's a hot water shower. So that's always nice. Now this place is a little tiny bit expensive. It's 35 soles per night. The best part of this is the nature. Now, walking through here, and the kitties love this place, I gotta tell you, G and Vanna, they love walking through here and hearing all the sounds. There's little tiny chickens that run around here. But you can walk back here on this boardwalk and you can see right in here and all kinds of birds flying in and out and then there's this great viewing area back here and you've also seen some really cool punk rock birds and some other stuff but in any event it's been a nice place like i said the kitties have enjoyed coming out here for walks i enjoy coming out here for walks but let's go do this really amazing event we're about to go do good morning from a little dirt road just outside of Puerto Maldonado, Peru. Now, if you haven't pulled up a map already, what that means is we're down in the Amazon jungle and we're on a little single dirt lane road headed to somewhere with lots of animals and lots of work. <laughs> but we're still excited, let's go. We made it here to the Amazon shelter. So this is what we're pretty excited about. And to be honest with you, when we started this dream and put together a bucket list, finding a place where we could work in a shelter for wild animals, help feed them, learn what they eat, just all the stuff, learn all about the animals was something that we really wanted to do. We didn't have a specific place and location but this place looks like it's gonna work out just great. So let's go see these animals. All right, we made it in and we're getting to go cut up the food, but look here. We looked all over for this guy. It's a tapir. Can you believe this, look at this guys. Look at him. Ah, oh, and these are howler monkeys up here. And it looks like they're the red ones and one of them has a baby. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be an amazing day. All right, so we're feeding the first animal. Oh, this one right here. Oh, you can see their little hands coming out here. So they're hungry, look at them. <laughs> look at all the little babies. <laughs> They're running around. This is insane. Look at them. Oh, good morning, everyone. This is our first little task feeding these little guys. Look at these little baby monkeys. How cool is this? 
Wow. All right, so look at the little babies. So the little baby right here is five weeks old, hanging on to mama, latching on for dear life. <laughs> All right, look at, he's like, feed me, feed me, feed me. <laughs> yeah, feed me, feed me. Look at him. The sun rose over the valley for the first time in a while. Like a new dawn is breaking And I'm free to laugh like a child Is this what it feels like To be right where you're meant to be This is a new beginning It turns out we got here a little bit late. Actually, we were on time, but by the time we got back, all these other volunteers who've been here for a bit longer than us, some of them a few days, some of them a few weeks, already had all the stuff cut up. So carrots, some sort of greens, grapes. So we got out of that, but we're not getting out all the work. Right now, we're headed over to chop some leaves for the monkeys. All right, here we go. We're looking for leaves. Now, as I understand it, this makes up about 80 or 90 percent of the monkey's diet. And some of these leaves contain a significant amount of protein. Right, we took a wild ride. I think we made it to the spot. So what, what are these? Do you know what these are? These are heart-shaped leaves. I don't know what the name is. <laughs> these are heart-shaped leaves. Heart-shaped leaves. So as it turns out, we're getting three kind of leaves. We've got the one. The only thing I could really glean from it was their heart shape, and they may or may not have protein. But we're gonna go get two more kinds of monkeys, or two more types of plants. Apparently, the banana leaves are other leaves. So the ladies slip back and pick these. So again, I got out of work. Good job, ladies. All right, day's work. Three different kinds of plants. These spiky ones are the ones that are supposed to have the protein. So they're the special treat for the monkeys. Are we all good on one side? Good job, team. <laughs> all right. So here at the animal shelter, they are getting ready in one month to do a big release of some of the howlers that are ready to go back in the wild. One thing they have to do though is they have to build a jaguar so they can teach the howlers 
to be afraid of the jaguars when they get released into the wild. So it's pretty exciting times around here because the main goal of a place like this is to rehabilitate the animals and get them ready to survive in the wild. Now, for the lady that runs this place, I'm sure she has huge mixed emotions. We actually talked about it a little bit. This is not her first release. She has released many before. She said the first time she cried for days, but she knows it's best for them to go in the wild. She also said that the red howlers need to be released because they have a very high mortality rate when they're in enclosures like this. So in one month, a bunch of these little guys are going to the wild. Now what's really amazing is the babies that are born here, she works really hard for them to not have any human contact with the volunteers or the staff. Now of course they get fed daily, food, water, and their enclosures get cleaned. But they work very hard to keep the babies as wild as can be. So there will be no adjustment for them. Now this morning we got here right at feeding time. It was quite hectic. We jumped right in and did the best we could to help. Kurt has gone off to cut some of the brush, the bushes from the jungle that these guys eat with every meal. Another thing that she's super excited about because this is all self-funded by her donations and any volunteers that come to release them into the wild to get the paperwork from the government here in Peru you need to do genetic testing, blood testing make sure there's no mutations, no crossbreeding it's very expensive so I'm not sure if it's an official grant or how it worked but she let me know that the San Diego Zoo has jumped in and is doing a lot to help her get the required genetic testing and financing she needs to go release this next batch into the wild. Now, maybe 15 or so years ago, Kurt and I went to that zoo and it's not your typical zoo. It's pretty amazing. More about the animals than you getting to see the animals. So if you're ever in San Diego, you want to swing by that zoo because not only is it a cool place, but they do a lot of outreach because they've reached deep into the jungles here. All right, we made it back to the animal shelter. All right, we're cleaning the monkey cages. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. It's okay. Oh monkey. What are you doing, monkey? We're cleaning up the pen and we got one helper here. You get your little water. Are you ready for some water? Let's see. Here comes some water. There you go. Look at that. Woohoo! Yay! New water. That's nice, isn't it? All right. So this is supposed to be an all-day volunteer work adventure. But to be completely honest with you guys, I got hot. And I uh, looked around for somewhere to sit down. There really wasn't anywhere to sit down. Uh, gotta give it to the young kids out here volunteering. They got more in it than me, because I have snuck off to the van to cool down with the air conditioner, check on the kitties, regroup a little bit, I'll go back out. I think we get to have a volunteer lunch. I'll probably feel a little guilty because 
maybe only worked three hours so far. But hot, steamy, muggy, Amazon jungle, working when quite honestly I'm not used to working like that. So me and the kitties are chilling out a little bit. The van says it is 98 degrees outside. Kurt is having the time of his life, feeding monkeys, cleaning up monkey poo. They came from abuse, being pets in a house, and the authorities confiscate. We've been working with the authorities since uh, 17 years, and uh, what we want to do is try to release it all the animals that we are having here. It's not easy because we have animals with wind broken, we have animals that came really sick, sometimes they just arrive here and they die. Recommendations, we can see the animals with, we don't touch because remember that these animals, in the future we will try to release it. We feed it twice a day, the first diet 7.30, the second diet 1.30, and the third diet only for the tapir and the gray deer because those are little. That's all. Because in the forest, this species only eat leaves, 80% of leaves, 10 fruits, and 10 seeds. When the people take us home, they give it, I told you, fried potato, fried chicken, chocolate cake, cream, chantilly, and the liver begin to bleed in. Yeah. So he needs to protect his family. He has a male, the little one is a male, and the other has a female. So he has two babies. And you can find in the forest one male and a lot of females yes. and a lot of babies. Yes. The, the, the groups are like that, a family group. I'm going with them, yeah. I'm going to stay eight days with them, checking, feeding, walking in the forest, three o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. Yeah. Where, which forest are you releasing them in? Primary. Just primary. Primary forest. Those are not from this area. So the authorities won't let me release because those are woolly monkeys, but the woolly monkeys are from very, very close Mazuko, that's 10 hours from here, or Pucalpa, Loreto, Iquito. And if you compare this species with this, are different species. Oh. This is Lagotrich Poepegi, and this is Lagotrich Lagotricha. This different color, more orange, yeah. this is more brown. The head, the form of the hair is different than this one, you see? Oh, you're so sleepy. Yeah, you are. You're so sleepy. Oh, oh it's so much work to yawn. Oh, it's his tongue. He's got a long tongue. And sharp teeth. Uh-huh. Wow. Over there. They're mostly fruits. Uh, a little bit of veg. They hate their veggies. Have a bit of dog food to um, get nice fluffy fur. And this is for the squirrel monkeys. Yeah, squirrel monkeys here as well. That's for a sick baby cup of shit that we're just eating. So yeah. All things. Nice. Corn duty over here. Oh, seed duty. Look at you. Look how he uses his snout, almost like a hand, to reach in there to move the food around, rake it in, shovel. <laughs> This is a really cool experience, guys. It turns out we didn't miss out on preparing the fruit and veg. We missed out on the morning routine, but they get fruit and veg both in the morning and the afternoon. We just got through the second round of feeding. Now we gotta head back, clean the containers that we put out this morning, 
And, uh, but yeah, we have to go in and feed the monkeys and the birds. And uh, this is just a surreal experience. You guys know we're animal lovers. So for me, this thing is off the charts. So I think some of these animals eat better than I do. And the different types of monkeys have, well, really all the animals have a different type of diet. And so some of them get more fruit and veg. The monkeys eat mostly leaves, but they eat a fair amount of fruit and veg in the morning as well. And so we cut all that up and delivered it to them. Green beans, lettuce, spinach, uh, oranges, cucumbers, all sorts of crazy fruits. So in any event, that was a real cool experience getting to cut that up and work with the team on that. There turns out there's a lot of volunteers here right now. And so really there's not a whole heck of a lot of work. I imagine with two or three people, it's quite a lot. But anyway, I was also surprised to hear that the monkeys are kind of under a threat here. Um, they're eaten by a lot of people. And so a lot of poachers will just kill the mama and then leave their babies behind and or take the babies for pets and so they kind of get mistreated and that's how they end up here and where they're nursed back to health and kind of treated in a way that prepares them to be released into the wildlife so you can't really talk about the amazon shelter without talking about magali magali is not only the founder but really the heart to this place She's, uh, she started this place about 17 years ago and really with a passion to help animals and really to release them into the wild. She gets animals in all different kinds of states. Uh, you know, people who've taken them in as pets and mistreated them. Uh, pets that, uh, animals that have been caught in wildfires, other types of things, most of the time when she gets them, they're in ill repair. She brings them back to health and then releases them. Wow, she has an amazing program and, and a huge heart. And it's all private. The government here in Peru, like we've seen in a lot of places, really doesn't help. However, there are regulations that she has to meet. And so uh, she counts mostly on donations and volunteers and a big portion of his volunteers. So Snow and I came here and volunteered for a day. It was a hundred soles for that or 25 bucks. There's other people here volunteering. She has educational programs for volunteers. It's really rewarding work to do. So if any of y'all are worried, inter interested in any of this, I encourage you to reach out to her. You can do that through Instagram and you can reach out to her and find out how you can help, but they definitely need help. As the day of volunteering is winding down, I can tell you this has been one of the more rewarding things that we've done along the journey. And Magala and her passion for helping these animals. I mean, really, it's, the, it's these red, these red monos, these red holler monkeys that are her passion as she talks about them, but you can also hear it's a passion for all the other animals. She showed me pictures of sloths and porcupines and anteaters and tapirs and all sorts of animals that she's brought back and released into the wild. And uh, it's just been a real rewarding experience to see them give the animals the medicine, the food, the care. Wow, it's just a really humbling experience. So any things to say about this place? It's a good place actually. Uh, they take a good care of the animals. Uh, for example, in the vet area, if you need um, some medicine for a treatment for a monkey, uh, Magali is going to find a way to find the medicine in the same day. Wow. Uh, and everything is like so quickly. So, and as uh, they have all these protocols of cleanliness and uh, feeding, um, they don't have a lot of uh, diseases and everything is like straight in here so they can be healthy all the time. Awesome, awesome, yes. thank you. So I had an awesome time with the volunteers here today. They all outworked me significantly. 
There's one in here that's hiding. What is your name? Mira. Mira, and you're from New Zealand, right? I'm from New Zealand. And you're here for a month? Yes. Okay. And you are? Sam from uh, the Netherlands, yeah. Just Sam. here for a couple of days, so uh, he's the expert. <laughs> How was your experience here at the Amazon Amazing. shelter? Yeah, really good. I think uh, it's an incredible thing what they're doing here and all the animals, to see all the animals and stuff. It's yeah, been amazing. Yeah. Really good experience. I, uh, I could recommend it to anyone. <laughs> awesome. All right, it was a full day of volunteer work, but I admittedly fired myself around 11 or 11.30. It was just too hot for me, guys. Hot! But I know from hearing some stories and seeing the little kid giddy look in his face, Kurt had an amazing time today. But I think it's time that we wind this video down. But you want to make sure and come back in a few days because it's border crossing time. We are leaving Peru in the next video and going to a brand new country. So, we'll see you guys in a few days. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.